Now I'm Good evening. Welcome to the Tuesday, October 19th, 2021 meeting of the Ann Arbor Planning Commission. This meeting is being held electronically to protect public health and safety due to the COVID-19 virus and to comply with orders issued by the governor, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, and or the Washtenaw County Health Department. We intend to conduct this meeting similarly to an in-person meeting. However, please be patient if there are technical issues. To speak during our public comment opportunities, you'll be able to speak through the webinar link or by phone, depending on your method of access to this meeting and the devices that you have available to you. Both the phone number and the web link are available on the published agenda in the public notices section of the city website. For phone access tonight, please call 877-853-5247 and then enter our meeting ID, which is 977-6634-1200. Uh, this information is also available on the published agenda, which is in the public notices section of the city website, and it's on the broadcast of the meeting on CTN channel 16, AT&T channel 99, and online at a2gov.org slash watch CTN, and once you're there, you would select the government channel. Item two is roll call. Mr. Leonard, could you please help us here? I would feel useless if I didn't. Uh, Commissioner Mills. Present in Ann Arbor. Commissioner Gibrandle. Present in Ann Arbor. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. Commissioner Sove. Here from Ann Arbor. Commissioner Abrams. Commissioner Hammerschmidt. Here in Ann Arbor. Commissioner Dish. Here in Ann Arbor. Commissioner Lee. Also here in Ann Arbor. Commissioner Clark. Present in Los Angeles. Commissioner White. I'm here in Ann Arbor. We have a quorum. 
Very good. Um, item number three is approval of the agenda. May I have a motion to approve the agenda? Moved by Commissioner Dish, seconded by Commissioner Lee. Any discussion of the motion? All those in favor, please raise a hand or say yes. That is all the hands. Uh, motion carries. Item number four is the minutes of the previous agenda, and we have two. May I have a motion to approve the, mini the minutes of the September 21st and October 5th, 2021 meetings? Moved by Commissioner Weich, seconded by Commissioner Lee. Any discussion of the minutes? All in favor, please raise a hand or say yes. That is all the hands. They, the motion carries. Um, item five are all of the reports. Um, Council Member Dish, do you have anything to report to us? Please kick us off. I do have a report. And my report is buried under a different document. Here we go. OK. Uh, that, yes, uh, the council approved our removing warehousing and indoor storage in C2B districts. And I believe they were grateful to us for sending that to them. Uh, they approved and completely didn't make a comment about the Sio Church rezone. They approved and were not especially grateful to see the Concord Pines site plan. And I tried to explain that this wasn't the thing that Planning Commission wanted to see either, but that until council changes zoning or the state wises up and changes its mind about building codes, we didn't have much leverage over that project. But there was an extensive discussion about we'd feel better about this if there were affordable housing, uh, we wish it were minimally all electric, um, we don't like all these single family homes, et cetera, et cetera. So interestingly enough, their, their discussion paralleled much of ours. So I don't think, I don't mean that as a, I think we did our best with that one. Did I forget anything, Mr. Leonard? Nope, that sounds comprehensive to me. Okay, and nothing else to report, Mr. Leonard? Um, just uh, a couple of status updates. Uh, uh, as a reminder to the commission and for the benefits of anybody listening, on November, the November 9th uh, Planning Commission, uh, which is normally a working session, is being dedicated to the proposed rezoning of properties in the state and Eisenhower area to T1. Um, we have started the process of notifying property owners. We'll also be notifying um, all property owners within a thousand feet of the proposed zoning. So I wanted to share that update and with the commission that that progress is being made. Uh, additionally, uh, we, uh, upon the recent adoption of the outdoor lighting uh, standards, uh, we have, um, we are in the process of sharing a, a, a flyer that's uh, posted on our on our website um, that is being released uh, broadly uh, to share some um, high level points of that new ordinance and expectations of it and to provide contact information uh, for individuals who want more information uh, that will be shared widely and also specifically shared with all of the neighborhood associations across the city and is also a resource available on our website. Um, so just wanna share those uh, communication updates with the planning commission. Do any other commissioner officers or committee liaisons have anything to report tonight? All right, we can move on to item six, which is audience participation. This is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about an issue that's not listed as a public hearing on tonight's agenda. So tonight, the Planning Commission will have dedicated public hearings on three different projects. Um, 1525 South State Street, 106 North 4th Avenue, and 2145 Independence Boulevard. If you wish to address Planning Commission on any other matter, now is an appropriate time to speak. Um, to speak, if you've joined in uh, via phone, you can press star nine on your, on your phone to raise your hand. Um, and if you've joined us through the web link, you can use the raised hand feature, which is located at the bottom of your screen. If you're watching us and want to dial in now, the dial-in number is 877-853-5247, and then our meeting ID is 977 
6634-1226. Mr. Leonard will call on those who have raised their hand. Again, you raise your hand by pressing star nine on your phone or using the raised hand feature. Um, and when you, it's your turn to speak, if you could please move to a quiet area and mute any background sounds so that we can hear you clearly, we'd appreciate it. Please also state your name and address at the beginning of your comments. We'll give it a minute just for the TV delay. And again, if folks have joined and want to provide public comment about an item that's not a public hearing tonight, you can press star nine on your phone or raise your hand through Zoom. I see no indication of speakers. All right. Uh, there'll be another opportunity for public comment at the end, towards the end of the meeting. Um, we're on to item seven then, which is public hearings for the next business meeting. And Mr. Leonard, do you have those listed? I do just one uh, public hearing. Um, it is listed as a new public hearing, um, although you will also recall that it, it has been postponed from a previous meeting. That is, it is proposed amendments to section 5.29.6 site plans, uh, specific standards, and, and we have added to that notification uh, section 5.22 stormwater management and spill erosion in chapter 55. So we've augmented the notice that was previously provided despite its postponement. So that's being renoticed um, consistent with your uh, date of November 4th. That is the only thing on the agenda. Very good. Thank you. Um, we tonight we don't have any unfinished business. Good for us for finishing things. So we will, um, we're on item 9A in regular business. And this is the 1525 South State, um, the White State Henry Tree Replacement Plan, which is for our approval. This doesn't go on to city council. I see Mr. Leonard, you're working on promoting people. We're quoting uh, city planner Chris Chang and uh, Jennifer Hall from the Ann Arbor Housing Commission. Okay. At least I hope I am. Um, and while I am stumbling through the Zoom, uh, Chris, I don't know if you had talked to the petitioner about a presentation. Yes. Oh, yep. Uh, Jennifer Hall will be making, I think, just a brief description, and then I put together a quick PowerPoint that we can go over. Great. Very good. So as soon as Jennifer joins us here. All right. Um, Ms. Hall, uh, you have up to 10 minutes to introduce your uh, petition. Sorry, I just oh. ran, ran across the street when I heard this agenda come up. <laughs> it's okay, catch your breath. It's going to be around eight. <laughs> <laughs> We're speeding for through the agenda tonight. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I know what the issue is, so I can just speak. I can't figure out how to get my video on in uh, right this second, but um, we recently completed a affordable housing project on the corner of State Henry and White Street. Uh, occupancy was uh, at the end of December. And <clears throat> within our site plan, of course, we had um, landmark, landmark trees identified among other trees. Um, the site plan was approved. I want to say in 2015 ish and it took that long to secure our funding get through the construction process so it's been quite a while since the original site plan um once people moved in um our property manager noticed that one of the trees on the front on the corner of state and henry was um dead and so she told our property maintenance folks to um, hire someone to take the tree down. She did not realize that it was a landmark tree and that it needed to get approval through a, a city uh, forestry, forestry process. And so that led to uh, Tiffany, I think she did a drive by and was, uh, had driven by the site 
and notice the tree had been removed. And so we are now replacing that tree um, through the required ordinance, which is replacing it with double the um, width of what, double the caliper width in inches of what was originally there. Um, because the site is a very tight urban like setting, you, we cannot replace all the trees on the site. We actually have to replace um, half the trees off the site. So in lieu of uh, replacing them on the site, uh, we are making a, a payment to the Parks Department for $4,800. All right, Mr. Chang. Okay, do I, let's see, let's make sure I can get this PowerPoint up. Okay, great, can everyone see the PowerPoint? We can. Great, great. And let's do this. And now we can even see the full screen version. Okay, excellent, here we go. So as, Ms. Hall just explained. Um, there's a 24 inch maple landmark tree located at the corner of Henry and White Street. Um, this was taken from the Google Street View in July 2019. So here is the tree. And again, this one was taken just recently, June 20, uh, 2021. That's the 24 inch maple landmark tree. I'm sure it probably had, was under distress when the, when the project was complete. And as of, well, I took the picture last week, but as in the last two weeks, as you can see, the, the 24 inch maple was removed at that corner. And this happened after the final CFO was issued to you know, the, the housing commission. So, which is required is they come back to planning commission. And since you can see, if you follow my cursor, that is where the approximate location of the 24 inch landmark maple was, it was removed. Uh, in place, since it's 24 inches, you're now required to do 200% mitigation. That means 48 inches of trees would be required. They have planted 10 trees throughout kind of the perimeter of the site, but that only equals approximately 24 inches of mitigation trees on site because there just wasn't any more room to put mitigation trees on site. Um, so they at the so to meet the the mitigation of of 200%, they also at the, the city has a formula you have to charge two hundred dollars per inch so they're still missing 24 inches the 24 inches times the 200 dollars comes to 4800 dollars that will go into the city street tree fund to plant trees throughout the city so that's how they've mitigated for the site they do need permission from uh, the city planning commission for this mitigation and i think it was that simple we can refer to any of these the site plan or the tree if you'd like but otherwise i'm here to answer any questions you may have All right, thank you very much. Um, I will open the public hearing for this. This is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about the proposed 1525 South State Natural Features Plan modification. If you wish to address the Planning Commission on this item and you've dialed in, please press star nine on your phone. If you've joined us through the web link, please use the raised hand feature function. For phone access, you can dial 877 853-5247 and then enter meeting ID 977-6634-1226. Mr. Leonard will call on those who have raised their hand. Again, if you've dialed in, you'd, you'd raise your hand digitally by pressing star nine on your phone. Um, when it's your turn to speak, please move to a quiet area and mute any background sounds so that we can hear you clearly. Please also state your name and address for the record. Just give it a minute. All right, sounds good. And again, if you've joined via telephone and wanna provide um, a public comment right now, you can press star nine on your phone. If you've joined through Zoom, um, through the web link, you can use the raised hand feature, which is at the bottom of your screen. I see no indication of speakers. All right, then I will close the public hearing and read the motion. It reads, the Ann Arbor City Planning Commission hereby approves the White State Henry site plan for Planning Commission 
approval, updating the natural features mitigation plan and the landscaping plan. Moved by Commissioner Hammerschmidt, seconded by Commissioner Dish. Any discussion? Commissioner Dish. So does this happen often that we, you know, we let people know it's a landmark tree, they know they have to be careful, and it is killed? It doesn't happen too often, but it has happened before. So when it is caught, there are, you know, typically if they're going to remove the, a landmark tree, it, 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 it happens before it goes to planning commission so they can mitigate for it at, at 50% mitigation. But if it is, happens to die or be taken down, then there's a little penalty involved that's 200% mitigation. I just remember us having some discussions with uh, around other site plans where we talked about the need to really, really be careful. I think it might have been the Packard, the kind of cool building that's on Packard. And we really talked about how large the root systems are and what you really have to do to not compact. And it just, I just, I, I feel bad about this. Um, and um, I just wish, can, is there anything we can do that we're not already doing to emphasize the importance of not losing these landmark trees. I would, well, I, I would just echo uh, what uh, Mr. Chang had said. I, I'm trying to recall, I think this might be the second time that it's happened in the last five years. So it, I don't think it happens very, Oh, maybe, maybe more. Commissioner Mills might be remembering more than I am. Um, I'm remembering two projects, both relatively recently, including this one. Um, but I, you know, to an extent, I think that that is the intention of our regulations. We, um, we communicate clearly, we communicate the expectation that landmark trees are preserved. And if they are not so in such circumstances as this, there is a penalty right in the regulations in order for ongoing compliance to the tune of, in this case, 150 percent of caliper inches from what would be permissible at the outset so 200 percent but but normal under normal circumstances oh, um, oh, oh right i see what you mean yeah yeah okay and just for what it's worth the ones that i remember were one on the kind of northeast side of town where they took it down because of site um like it wasn't it wasn't damage, it was like that they just cut it down because they couldn't see out of the construction drive. And the other one was by the stadium, that one, that development that's like the whole block. Yeah. Um, that's what I remember. I had forgotten about the one on the north side, thank you. So that's yeah. that's three and five years, I think. Yeah. Um, Commissioner Gibrandel. Um, two things. One is that I noticed in the in in some of the old aerials that um the orange construction fence that is intended to be able to protect the critical root zone was up along State Street, but had been knocked down around the tree itself. And so um, I know that's like a, you know, one of those, um, you know, the city can't be everywhere all the time in terms of noticing things like that. But I guess what I would encourage um, just people who, who notice things like that? It's like it's okay to let the city know if you notice that something is down like that, um, because that's what really protects it. A lot of times is is putting that orange fence around the critical root zone. So if that had happened, then maybe you know we would have had better luck with this one. So I think that that's that's one thing. It's out of our hands in terms of planning commission, but it's something that just as any citizen can notice. Like if um, I've seen all kinds of things <laughs> and. And I just let people know, and then somebody does something about it. It's pretty great. So people are responsive at the city around it. So um, I would encourage if, if people see that kind of activity happening, you know, we can't put it back in the same way. And so I would encourage people to be able to, to speak up. The other thing is that, um, you know, there's a bunch of U of M development along the, the opposite side of the street there. And um, they are kind of notorious for not doing any street trees. And, uh, I would advocate for putting in some street trees where there are panels of rectangle, rectangles of grass a little bit further to the north on the west side of state that is very sunny and bright as you're biking down 
And I think, I mean, again, I know it's going into the big fund and all that kind of thing, but it's always nice to have it stay close to wherever the development is, I think. And um, I would advocate for planting some of those um, rectangles that are there um, because it's going to provide shade for at the, you know, at the end of the day for people that are walking and biking, um, you know, heat island effect, all that, all that good stuff. And, um, I just feel like U of M isn't doing it on their own. And so it'd be nice if in situations like this, where we have some leverage, um, you know, city still controls the right away. So, uh, it would be great if we could put some, some trees back in there. That would be my vote. Thank you. Commissioner Clark. I guess, <clears throat> so I just was um, a little bit concerned to see that the tree was removed before um, city staff could inspect it. And just the decision-making process that would have gone into that, um, the order of operations of it not getting um, looked at and then being removed and then kind of after the fact becoming an issue and just with the upcoming um there being a lot of development coming up through the housing commission just to be um clear that those sorts of processes issues are don't become kind of like a regular thing um and uh i mean if the tree was in critical uh, bad um condition because the critical root zone i mean it's fair enough if it wasn't able to be saved i guess um but i think just like making sure that those things are more um open and yeah, and so I guess my one question was going to be, um, if we're the city, if, if this is the Housing Commission, am I understanding correctly, this is the Housing Commission that's going to be paying the Parks Department 4800 so it's kind of like shifting just the city paying the city essentially for the trees, if I'm understanding right? Yeah, um, I would say, I would say yes. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually costing us $25,000. And if that doesn't teach someone a lesson, then I don't think anything else will. Um, literally, it was, I, this will not happen again. Like that was just a total fluke of a um, property manager who was concerned because the tree was sitting right above a bus stop and there were branches that were falling down and she did not want to have that insurance liability of injuring someone. She is never involved in the site plan approval process. It's post construction uh, property management. So that's nothing that she would have been aware of. Um, so, but she is very aware of it now, as is our, our maintenance facility person because of this issue that just happened. I would also, I would just also add quickly, I'm not, I, this doesn't necessarily definitively answer the question or to refute like the source of those funds, but in the context of the city's ordinances, this is considered a private development. Uh, the Ann Arbor Housing Commission is a partner in that, but there are other partners in that as well. That's why, in fact, it went through the site planning process in the, in the outset at all. Also, just because of the num the amount that Ms. Hall just was just saying, um, the twenty five thousand dollars. Can do you have some sense of like what that is? I mean, I I know that you're, there's the payment into the fund. There's the paying for the ten trees, but um, are, are the other fees associated with like the uh, site plan review process? Yeah, the site plan review process was over ten thousand dollars, and I had to hire an architect, which is going to be about five thousand uh, dollars. Then purchasing the trees, as well as making the donation to the parks department, so it ended up being around twenty five thousand dollars. Got it. Oh, I have a follow up question that's for staff on that, but go ahead, Commissioner Hammerschmidt. Just really quickly, I think Mr. Chang, did you mention, or maybe Ms. Hall, the trees have already been planted? The twenty four inches have already been planted. No, I don't. No. I don't think they oh. have because we have to get through this approval process okay. first. With okay. it. I, thank you. I thought that he had said that they were already in for some reason, and then I was confused, like our role here. So, okay, I misheard. Thank you. So my follow-up question, because, oh, sorry, go ahead, Commissioner Dish. This might be in the nature of a follow-up too. I just wanted to clarify if Commissioner Gib, Gib Randall was proposing an alternative to the $4,000 payment uh, that you were, were you suggesting planting the trees on the other side of the street instead of paying? Um, I think it's up to the city forester to determine where uh, she wants to put them. And I would just advocate for that is what I'm saying. So um, I think that 
that makes more sense for it to be in her hands. She understands what's going on in terms of, you know, just the, the big picture of where trees need to go. I'm just putting my vote in <laughs> to see if I could um, tip it in a direction in that area that I think is in need of some street trees that could really help. Um, I mean, one of the nice things about that tree is that it was right next to the bus stop and and there's old you know photos old aerials of people standing there under the shade you know from the aerials and everything and i just think the more that we can have um shade along these areas where people are especially doing multimodal transportation and things like that the, the better we are off so all right now i'll ask my follow-up question and this is actually mixing tonight's petition with what we're seeing in two weeks. So also testing kind of what's on there. In the site plan review process, um, one of the things that we had been like, you muted me. Oh, now you muted yourself. Maybe you were trying to I'm unmute sorry. yourself. My, my dog was barking for a minute and I was trying to mute myself and I hit the wrong button. <laughs> I was going to say, clearly, I, I am being silenced. <laughs> How dare you ask this question, Commissioner Mills? <laughs> I, I'm i wondering um, if you could remind us, Mr. Leonard, of where we landed on this in the table, or maybe that's something I just want to put it everybody's like, I'm of mixed minds about this, in part based on what um, uh, Ms. Hall just said about like, this cost us a lot of money. And a, lo and a lot of those are associated with the, what we understand to be an onerous process of site plan review. And while it's like, I hate that money to come out of, you know, um, the housing commission. Uh, at the same time, like, I also like, don't want this to become habit for not, not this petitioner, for anybody, right, who's working before us. And so I feel like it's a, uh, I don't, I don't actually, I'm just going to say like, this makes me think about what, what the right um, uh, number should be on that table of what we're going to see in a couple weeks, what the right letter or whatever. So where is it right now, Mr. Leonard? Um, it would be a removal of a regulated natural feature, which would make it a site plan for planning manager approval Got that's it. um so it uh, would still require hiring the architect probably wait yep, um, okay but we also have modifications to an approved natural features protection plan or mitigation plan oh yeah that would only be if it wasn't covered under a site plan for planning manager approval then it would elevate so it, it would be a site plan for planning manager so okay that would be, um, you know, that would be a lower threshold of approval. And just not to get too off track, but never mind. I think this was a plan unit development, so that approval still would have proceeded to um, city council for approval, even under the current draft of that ordinance. Okay, so when we have this discussion in two weeks i'm making a mental note and saying it out loud then i'm going to ask you then how the um what the fee structure i know it's as for this as an example how that compares of coming to us versus coming to you which is what we would be proposing part of the proposal for the change um but that's for the next time thank you for looking that up i'm sorry any, <laughs> any other um any other commissioner questions or comments on this petition rather than what we're going to deal with in two weeks all right I, oh commissioner dish go ahead i'm sorry i'm so slow at finding my hand so and i'm also slow and a little bit dense so in the exchange that you and mr leonard just had does that mean it would or would not save any money in this instance because there's still a site plan required um i'm jumping to making a lot of assumptions here but i think there would be cost savings there would not be cost savings in the trees there would not be cost savings in the 
contribution, there would likely not be cost savings in hiring an architect. There would be cost savings in the fee because the city's cost to review a site plan at staff level versus planning commission level is as a lower fee. Um, currently, the planning commission approved uh, site plan fee is, as mentioned, uh, approximately $10,000. And for administrative, it's approximately $4,000. Okay. So it would save some money. Okay. Now I understand. I didn't, I think I didn't understand what the 10,000, I just assumed that the 10, I didn't know whether it was 10,000 and also an architect, but I don't know what I was thinking, but now I get it. Yeah, and just as a reminder for the benefit of the commission and and everyone, those fees are established. They are actually distributed to a wide variety of city departments. As you are aware, a wide variety of city departments review site plans for compliance. Um, in a case like this, the site plan is pretty much set, but it still goes through that review. We're still ver validating that information when it's presented to you. Um, when it goes to planning commission or city council, it has additional publication costs, noticing costs. Those costs are reduced. The typical staff time is reduced because they're not, it's not as long and it's not as much, um, it's just not as much time attending and seeing through that process when it happens in an administrative way. And for the interested public, that $6,000 difference, we get none of that. We are all volunteers just in case people had any questions. Commissioner White has a new microphone. He does. But when I used to have to hire babysitters, that was on my own dime too, so. Yes. Like. <laughs> we are, we, like all boards and commissions, we are forever indebted to all. <laughs> um, thanks for that follow-up, Commissioner Dish. That was the details that I was going to ask Mr. Leonard to dig out next time around. So you got it for us now. That's really helpful, like while it's fresh in our minds. Um, anything else about this particular petition? All right, Mr. Leonard, I think we can have our vote. Would you like a roll call vote? Yes. Okay. Commissioner Hammerschmidt. Yes. Commissioner Dish. Yes. Commissioner Lee? Yes. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Weich? Yes. Commissioner Mills? Yes. Commissioner Gib Randall? Yes. Commissioner Sove? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Hall. Thank you. Have a nice night. You too. All right. Item nine is the 106 North 4th Avenue addition site plan for city council approval. I'm seeing the squares moving around. Trying to be as fast as it, at, at it I can. No problem. And for people watching and to fill the gap in this time, we'll first have a petitioner petition uh, a petitioner presentation for up to 10 minutes and then staff presentation before we have the public hearing. Um, petitioners, uh, you may be getting notification that you need to accept role as panelist. Please accept that if you'd like to participate in that regard. Looks 
looks like everybody's moved over. Um, yep, I just need to uh, grant co-host, uh, Mr. Murphy, are you gonna be uh, presenting the petition? I am, yes. Okay, one moment, please. <clears throat> All right, uh, we are ready whenever you are. You can feel free to turn on your camera if you wish or and share your screen whenever you're ready. Then we'll start the clock. Okay, let me just get organized here. Start my camera. All right, can everyone see my screen? We can. Great. My name is David Murphy. I'm at 3411 Gettys in Ann Arbor. I am the architect for the land title building. And additionally, we have the owner, Michael Watts, on the call. We have our civil engineer, Timothy Zimmer from Livingston Engineering. And we have Jason Cooper from JNN Contracting as the construction manager. The land title building is located at 106 North 4th Avenue. And it's located here. I kind of outlined it in yellow. It's on the east side of Fourth Avenue and just north of Huron. Um, just to get some context here, the building directly north is the Washtenaw County building. Um, this is the golf building. Uh, to the what would that be? The west is the or the east is the hands-on museum, and the west would be the Washtenaw County Jail. So that's kind of the location we're talking about here. The land title building is a historic building and the earliest records we can find were from a fire map um, in 1888. So we're assuming it was built around 1888. In 1908, the original timber structure was occupied, and that's this building here, by a dry cleaner called Home Steam Laundry. In 1913, a handful of years later, Washtenaw Abstract Company purchased the site and built the brick structure that still remains on the site today. And that's this building right here. In 1927, the Art Deco facade was added onto the building. And in 1949, the second addition was done on the east side of the building. So here's the building. Um, occupied by Washtenaw Abstract Company, and they put an addition on here. Today, the building is looks like this. Um, the top two images are from 4th Avenue. This is 4th and 4th here. Um, this is the land title building. To the right is the golf building, and this is the Washtenaw County building. And down here we have, looking kind of from the intersection of 4th of and then Huron runs straight this way. This is the golf building, land title building, and the Washtenaw County building. The last image here just shows a view from Huron Street just to show a little bit more context. Um, you can kind of see the building kind of peeking through over the top. Today we are here seeking approval for a two-story, 900 square foot, I'm sorry, 910 square foot addition um, on the east side of the building with a rooftop patio. A few things to note, we are in the D1 downtown core district. We are in the overlay district of area six on Main Street. The, it's a general office use, which is a permitted use per table 5-15. The max FAR is 400, and our actual calculated FAR is only 2.16 with the addition. The existing building is 5,247 square feet. The proposed addition is 910 square feet. And the total proposed building would then be 6,157 square feet. This is a view looking at the rooftop patio and the addition. The addition design is quite contemporary in nature. It's got a lot of straight lines, sharp corners. Um, the black facade that you're seeing there is a rain screen system and is comprised of a high pressure laminate Trespa system. Trespa is the brand name. 
The penthouse here will have a glass door, um, glass storefront that walks out onto the rooftop patio. And the rooftop patio is uh, comprised of a raised deck system. It's got a 30 foot long walkable skylight and a clear glass uh, windscreen. This is another aerial view of the building. And I just wanted to relate the, so we're, this is 4th Avenue here. This is the facade. I just wanted to show a, a visual of the setback from the front facade to the addition. That's kind of what you're seeing here. This is the rooftop patio. We'll have our mechanical equipment out on the roof here and the addition portion in the back. This also is just for a little bit of context. This is looking from Huron Street. Um, Fourth Avenue would be over here. You can see the facade sticking out here and just a little bit of the addition poking out past. This is the golf building in front here and a little bit of the, the rooftop patio. These are the floor plans and working from the bottom up. Everything that you're seeing in this kind of mauve pinky color are the existing facility. So the basement existing, first floor existing, and then the partial part of the second floor is existing. What we're proposing is to put a 455 square foot addition here, and then additionally up on the penthouse level, another 455 square foot addition with the rooftop patio here. Here are the elevations of the building, and I think most of this was captured in the renderings that I showed, but I'll just quickly talk about each one and give a couple dimensions that are important. Working from the bottom here, this is the view from the alley. Let me see if I can zoom in on it. This is the view from the alley. This is the existing building up until this point, and then we're gonna have our Trespa rain screen going up the two stories with just one scupper on that back side. The west elevation is the front elevation. And what you can see is that there's a, a two foot difference between the existing building height and then what we're proposing the addition beyond it here. So this is the addition back here and then the existing up front. This is the elevation, penthouse east is the elevation here. Zoom into that. So you can see the, there's an aluminum framing and glazing system with the Trespa rain screen um, and some, some angles giving it some uniqueness. On the side elevations, both sides are very similar to each other. So I'll just talk about the south elevation here. You can see the 72 foot, three and a half inches um, setback from 4th Street that I was referring to before. We will have a little bit of infill on the parapet wall. So this is a brick parapet wall, and we'll need to infill this for the roof um, rooftop patio. And then this is the rain, or I'm sorry, the, the windscreen above. And that windscreen is only, um, it's just under four feet tall. And that's all uh, made out of clear glass. The overall height of the building, um, the existing is 36 feet, five inches. And what we're proposing is 38 foot, two inches to the backside here. All right, let me try to zoom out. This is our Alta survey. There's not a lot to note on here other than on the front side, we did have some encroachment into the sidewalk by 0.1 feet to 0.4 feet. I mean, minor encroachment onto the sidewalk that we've um, taken care of with the city already. And on our site plan, um, I'm not gonna talk a lot about this just because all the utilities are existing. We're not proposing changing anything um, from an engineering standpoint. So all the engineering on the site is remaining the same. 
minute to go. Well, with that, I'll leave it up to you guys to ask questions. All right, very good. Um, now we'll have the staff report though before we actually do get to ask you questions. Um, is that Mr. Khan? It is, thank you. <clears throat> I think David did a, a fine job summarizing the proposed project. It's quite a small project, but an important one. Um, uh, staff does recommend approval of the site plan because it complies with all applicable uh, local, state, and federal ordinances, standards, and regulations. It will not cause a public or private nuisance, and it will not have a detrimental effect on public health, safety, and welfare. And um, that's the extent of my staff report. All right, very good. Um, I will then open the public hearing on this item. This is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about the proposed 106 North 4th Avenue site plan. If you wish to address the Planning Commission on this item and you've dialed in, you can press star nine on your phone. Um, if you joined us through the web link, you can use the raised hand feature but button, which is at the bottom of the screen. For phone access, you can call 877-853-5247, and then our meeting ID is 977-6634-1226. City staff will select those who have raised your hand. Again, you do that if you've dialed in through pre pressing star nine. Otherwise, use the raise hand button. Um, when it's your turn to speak, please move to a quiet area and mute any background sounds so that we can hear you. Please state your name and address at the beginning of your comments. Don't see any. No indication of speakers. All right. Well, let me know as I'm reading the motion if we see somebody jump in. Um, the motion, the Ann Arbor City Planning Commission hereby recommends that the Mayor and City Council approve the land title building 106 North 4th Avenue site plan, moved by Commissioner Sauve, seconded by Commissioner Lee. Any discussion on this item? Commissioner Clark. Um. I just want to thank the petitioner and say this is probably one of my favorite buildings in Ann Arbor, like architecture wise, and I think it's kind of an interesting design and wishing them luck with it. Oh, and I appreciated the history lesson. That's what I meant to say. Okay. Other questions or comments? Go ahead, Commissioner Lee. Thank you. Um, hey, I, I noted that the mechanical unit was noted as TBD. Um, will that be visible from the street front at all? That's kind of closer to. Can you provide a little more information on that? Yeah, it, we actually have um, the rooftop unit selected now, and they are not visible. We have this parapet wall is upwards of seven feet tall. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, other than that, yeah, that, that was my one question. Um, I'll voice Commissioner Clark's remarks as well. I think it looks cool. Uh, was there a specific reason you guys went with that particular cladding, just for my edification, um, the, the high pressure laminate? Um, well, it's used a lot around Europe and they've had a lot of success with it. Um, but other than the aesthetics and the budget, no other, no other reason. Gotcha. Hey, just an interesting just position with the limestone. So, um, got it. Thank you for the clarification on the mechanical units. Thank you. Other questions or comments? I have one. Um, the second floor of the new addition looks like that's where the um, residential starts. Are there no there are no windows or like? on that it's all uh, office so the so the sec so the addition that's on the yeah right there that's not part of the um the addition in blue there's the stairwell and mm -hmm. then whatever bathrooms that's there's so there's just no windows it's all just part of the office correct yep okay and so the 
So this is not residential. This is penthouse, like office penthouse. Office I guess penthouse, that, correct, yeah. All right, that, I guess yeah. that was my confusion. I was like, that wait. Was the confusion. <laughs> yeah. All right, that makes a whole lot more sense because I thought this is a teeny <laughs> tiny, <laughs> this is a teeny tiny unit um, with no windows, which would be awkward. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I agree. I think that this is very much like, uh, I appreciated the history lesson. I feel like it fits in um nicely um glad to see some you know uh opportunities to expand use expand the footprint that we can do but still retain historical kind of the, the historical buildings that we have so um, yeah and just to note on that on that subject is we maximized um per the hdc this has already been approved by the hdc but we did maximize the square footage we were allowed to do Okay, so you tried to make the second, the the top floor. Yeah, yeah, we it would have been better to um, have more square footage up on the second floor, but um, this was the fifty percent rule uh, applied to all additions after I think it was nineteen fifty four or fifty two. So this was the amount of square footage we could do. Got it. All right. Well, thanks for the little education on that. Thank you for maximizing. Um, I think this is this is a prime location so that we can maximize within the context of our ordinances. Great. Other questions or comments? Mr. Leonard, you have unmuted yourself, presumably because to ready yourself for a roll call vote. Okay, great. Commissioner Hammerschmidt. Yes. Commissioner Dish. Yes. Commissioner Lee? Yes. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Mills? Yes. Commissioner Gibrandle? Yes. Commissioner Sove? Yes. You are all feeling very agreeable this evening. Very good. The motion carries. Good luck at City Council. Thank you for your time. Yep, thank you. All right, look, it's not even eight o'clock yet and we're on 9C, the last item of new business. This is the A2 Montessori Child Care Center special exception use for planning commission approval. Um, and Mr. Leonard is moving everybody around. So, but it'll be our typical process of hearing from the petitioner for up to 10 minutes. And then it looks like Ms. DeLeo is on. Um, and so her presentation before the public hearing. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Mills. Um, the applicant's team um, is here. Um, and I believe that Anna Epperson uh, will be making a brief presentation. Um, probably just give her a minute to join. Sounds good. Welcome, folks. Does everybody who has who needs to share a screen have that permissions given? Great. Yes. We'll start the clock whenever you're ready. We're ready. Go for it. Okay. Hi. Um, I'm I'm Allison Stupka. I own and operate Ann Arbor Children's House. It's a Montessori daycare. I've done this for 10 years now, and I have been, oh, okay, um, I am petitioning for special exception use at the Church of the Good Shepherd. I have been um, wanting to expand my program because of, there's great demand for, my program is for children three to six years old. There's great demand for, for daycare for children who are um, infants and toddlers. So. I found a program director um, and I found a church that wanted to, to rent to us. And in order to get licensed, we need um, uh, city approval and uh, special exception use. So thank you. Um, 
my program director and teacher is going to speak next. Hello, everyone. My name is Paula Manrique Gomez Pfeffer. Um, if we can go down, Anna, with the slides, uh, we have created a, a presentation for you to see some of a um, couple of visuals on um, what. Yeah. So, Allison, if you this is um, the three to six program that Allison is running right now. And as she said, she's been operating for 10 years and this is me. Thank you. We can stop right here for one second. Um, I've been running a, a parent infant um, class, also parent toddler or, or um, uh, I guess, um, uh, you know, guardian parent or um, toddler program. I started in 2018. Uh, parents come to uh, the Church of the Good Shepherd and um, learn about the Montessori philosophy, uh, make materials, learn about, um, you know, how to take this philosophy to their homes. Um, you can move to the next slide. Um, but obviously, there is a big need uh, for all these parents to go back home, as we know, uh, back to school. Um, back to school or to work, <laughs> as we know, um, we've been reading and we know that a lot of parents can't go back to work because there's not no child care. So Allison um, has found me to open her infant and toddler program at um, the Church of the Good Shepherd. So why is this a positive impact? Uh, there is a bit, really big need for child care in the Arbor community, uh, as we know. Um, and of course, as we all know, there is more um, need than there is space. And many, many centers, as you all know, closed during COVID. Um, and so there are huge wait lists for um, in centers already, especially for infants and toddlers. Um, and parents are really begging for another quality program. And obviously this location, if you've been, it's is ideal. It's surrounded by a green space, um, low traffic, quiet. It's a really quiet neighborhood. Um, I am actually in the neighborhood. Um, and um, the congregation is really interested in the monastery philosophy, as well as some of the neighbors um, in the area who, you can move to the next slide, who have contacted um, me uh, thanking for um, this program to open. Um, they love the, um, the idea. They love what we have been doing. They, they, since we've been running this program, they understand that there might be more, um, you know, pe people coming in and out, but they, they have experienced it and, they, and it all seems to be uh, positive. Uh, this was a picture of us walking in the neighborhood with some children. We went um, to pick apples at the corner, um, actually my neighbor's house. Um, so yeah, we're using the beautiful spaces around the church. And Montessori, if you know, is a um, wonderful way to start life, to uh, really um, lay the ground strong um, in education. So um, Allison and I are both trained AMI, which is um, a certificate that you get that's in, uh, internationally known. Um, we were both AMI trained and I will be serving as her program director. I have a master's in um, education leadership and policy from the University of Michigan. And obviously um, my um, Montessori and as well my bachelor's in early childhood education and administration. Um, and yes, we are in town, the only, we will be the only infant toddler Montessori program um, in Ann Arbor within, you know, a couple of blocks away from, I guess, the, the university. Um, there are some, and there's one, actually one in Sao Township, but not in Ann Arbor City. Um, and this is Dr. Deborah, um, Deborah Dean Ware, the pastor of the church. Um, who has been um, providing social support to various community groups for over 20 years. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Anna Epperson. I am the 
uh, architectural designer working with Paula and Allison, and I compiled the documents for the, the site plan and um, assisted with the application. I'm also a member of the Church of the Good Shepherd. Um, I just wanted to go over some of the site information first, just to give a little bit more context. Um, the, we're located right in the center of this this view here, so Washtenaw Avenue is up on an East Stadium, or right the north of the screen, bounded by Packard on the west, South Huron and Platt on the east, and um, Packard comes around on the um, south side. The site itself, as Paul stated, is surrounded by there, there's lots of open space. It's surrounded by trees. There's a detention pond, which actually an overgrowth looks looks beautiful. Lots of tall grasses, nice shrubbery. There's a space for a community garden. Um, very little built surface, with the exception of probably the parking lot with, within on the existing site itself. The building sits very far back from the road, over 100 feet. It's Cited, I think, very well in the lot. It's a Robert Metcalf building, so it's a very well-known um, architect within the Ann Arbor area and probably nationwide. Um, this site is very well maintained by the church. There's beautification days throughout the year. You know, it's it's a really, I think, a pride for for this residential community. Um, just to get into some of the you know, more aspects of the zoning that it is in an R1T zoning classification, the church was granted, the, they're allowed for the zoning code for religious assembly. We're seeking the special exception use for the child care center. The, as you can see from the site plan, we're two plus acre lot. Um, minimum required is 75,000 square feet of lot area for the child care. So we are well above that. Really, the only modifications required are um, bicycle parking. Uh, we have 66 spaces already provided, even given the breakdown with the 10 caregivers. If there are 10 caregivers, one space per caregiver, and then 30 children, we only need 13 spaces of that 66. So even if there are other functions occurring at the church at the same time, which there are certain groups that meet throughout the week, but the, the parking lot is never full, even during worship on Sundays. It's it may peak, but it's usually never quite full. Um, we will be required to do a Class B bicycle hoop. So we'll have one hoop with two spaces provided in a covered location. Um, and I believe that's pretty much the extent. There are um, additional features that we are would like to include in, um, for building and child care center use. Um, just to go over some of the this broad overview, the um, center will operate Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 5.30 p.m. They stayed at 30 children, 10 teachers max, so under 50 occupants. Minute uh, left. Drop off, sorry, drop off between 7.30 and 8.30, pick up in the evening. There's really going to be no change to the, um, the traffic pattern that already exists within the neighborhood. Um, the building modifications are minor. They're all in relation to egress and then some, some fencing. And I'll just jump to those really quick. So the existing site, you'll see very little changes to the new. There's sidewalk and some fencing back here. And as I zoom in to the overall building footprint, you can see that the, this is the lower level of the church. These are the spaces being proposed for the classroom, sidewalk for egress, and out to um, the main parking area and then fencing along in the back within the confines of existing um, sidewalk space at the perimeter of the building. I believe that's really the, the majority of the, the presentation. Um, this is an example of the fence that is being proposed. Um, I think this does say five feet, but I, I think we said four foot max on the plan, so I think we'll just need some clarification on what is actually going to be allowable. Thank you. All right, very good, thank you. Um, Ms. DeLeo, staff report to add in here? Um, <clears throat> thank you, thank you very much. I'll just go over the staff report while I'll focus on the standards of approval. As everyone knows, this is the um, uh, A2 Montessori Child Care Center at the Church of the Good Shepherd, um, 2145 Independence Boulevard, 
um, special exception uses run with the land, so there can be a name change with, with no problem if that's desired. Um, I feel that the um, applicant team went over the nuts and bolts of the project very well. I will say that um, this is um, a site plan for special exception use. The things that they're talking about um, doing do not trigger um, any upgrade to the site plan. Uh, fences can be installed without site plan approval. Um, sidewalks for egress or barrier free um, can be installed and you can uh, install um, or swap windows and doors um, that is cosmetic, that is not floor area. So the things that they're doing um, are do not trigger any upgrade to a site plan um, approval. And what is before the commission is simply the, the use tonight. Um, special exception uses in general have seven um, standards and they deal with um, consistency with the comprehensive plan, compatibility, um, consistency with the neighborhood, parking, pedestrian safety, vehicle safety, um, and natural features. And staff, we have found that the uh, uh, request meets all of the general standards for uh, special exception use approval. Child care centers also have some specific standards. There's basically two. Um, they have a minimum lot size of 7,500 square feet, which this um, the subject site far exceeds and they require some uh, parking um, specific to the child care center in addition to whatever the host use is. And this site meets both. It has enough parking for both the church and the child care center to run simultaneously. I understand that that probably won't occur, but the code requirement is for, simul for independent parking. And we have that here um, by the numbers. Um, and um, in the staff report is a proposed motion. It's fairly long. Uh, the Planning Commission will recall that um, the findings for approval are in the motion. Um, I am happy to answer any specific questions, happy to answer any general questions. Uh, staff is recommending approval of this and that concludes my report. I will mention, um, Nope, I'm going to butt in before I conclude. Um, that I, the staff report and the proposed motion is written for 40 children. Um, the applicant um, in their presentation indicated 30 children. I, I feel that um, a little wiggle room is always good, um, but if the applicant uh, or if the commission feels strongly, the specific number is in your, your purview. Thank you very much, Ms. DeLeo. Before we take that up, we'll open the public hearing for this item. This is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about the proposed special exception use um, permit and plan for 2145 Independence Boulevard. If you wish to address the Planning Commission on this item, press star nine on your phone if you've dialed in or use the raised hand feature if you join the web link. If you're watching us now and want to dial in, the call-in number is 877-853-5247, and our meeting ID is 977-6634-1226. Mr. Leonard will call on those who've raised their hand, calling on you by the last three digits of your telephone number. Please move to a quiet area and mute any background sounds so that we can hear you clearly, and please state your name and address for the record. Mr. Leonard, I see a caller. Caller with the phone number ending with 941, you can press star six to unmute your phone and address the Planning Commission. Caller with the phone number ending with 94, there you go, you have three minutes. Hello? We can hear you, go ahead. Um, okay, this is Mike Lupo. My address is 2435 Powell. I share uh, my southern border is the church's northern border. Um, I'm concerned about the amount of uh, dog walkers that use the church's lot uh, grounds as their designated dog park. Um, there's always dogs off leash. Um, the 
way it is now, the way it has evolved, there is a sidewalk going north that comes out right in the middle of uh, Powell. I'd like to see that removed, and it would only be an addition of about 10 feet of sidewalk to the west. If um, the sidewalk entered from uh, Camelot, the dog walkers could go along the western border of the church and exit out the driveway instead of skimming right where all the church attendees and uh, school attendees are unloading children and trying to access the building. Um, it's, it would be safer for everybody to keep the dogs to crossing the property on the west. Um, there is also motocraft, motocross traffic in the evenings, roaring around the pond. Um, there's all kinds of things that go on at night, but um, it would be much safer to move the dogs away from loading and unloading people entering the building. There's, there's no. Uh, I, I, I um, watched the school. Uh, I guess it was not attending last year because of COVID, but. And we, they are, children were very well behaved, but um, they're not really protected enough in terms of fences. When they go out for recess, there's you know dogs walking through the middle of their recess. Millicent dog walkers. We have many. A lot of pit bulls. Okay, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Caller with the phone number ending was 707. Caller with the phone number ending was 707. You can press star six and address the planning commission. Hi, my name is Darcy Seeley. I'm at 2320 Manchester Road. And our property actually um, abut directly to the um, church's property, the back of our property does. Um, and just kind of curious, what the planned outdoor activity play time will be during those operating hours um, last summer and winter with whatever children activities were going on at the church. Um, there was an abundance of children who were outside during recess and um, children being children, of course, made, made a lot of noise, but um, being backed up directly to that property and not having any um, a, a privacy fence was a little tricky during the day. So I'm just sort of curious what the, the, the planning is for, for this usage. All right, thank you. We'll be sure to ask. Thank you. All right, seeing no other callers, I will close the public hearing and read the motion and it is lengthy but it helps as Ms. DeLeo said remind us of kind of what the findings are associated with um, uh, those standards. So the Ann Arbor City Planning Commission after hearing all interested persons and reviewing all relevant information including an accompanying site plan finds the petition substantially meets the standards in chapter 55 of the Unified Development Code section 5.29.5.d, which is special exceptions, and section 5.16.2.b, which is child care centers, and therefore approves the A2 Montessori special exception use for child care center. Um, this approval is based on the following findings. One, the proposed use will be consistent with the R1C single family dwelling district, which provides for residential use, including special exceptions for religious assembly and child care centers. Two, the proposed use will not adversely impact traffic, pedestrians, bicyclist circulation, or road intersections based on the location. Independence Boulevard provides access to the site, and the proposed use is consistent with the existing and other surrounding uses trafficked impact. 
Three, the, site, the subject site meets the use specific standard for at least 7,500 square feet of lot area and the existing conditions provide at least one off street parking space for each state registered caregiver in addition to the required parking for the existing religious assembly use. Four, a site plan documenting the existing and proposed conditions of the site has been submitted as part of this application. This special use approval is based on the following conditions. One, the child care center is provided for mo no more than 40 children. And that the Ann Arbor Planning Commission approves the attached site plan, which documents, com which demonstrates compliance with the applicable special exception use standards as no development which would otherwise require site plan approval has been proposed. That motion is moved by Commissioner Sove, seconded by Commissioner Weich. Anyone want to kick off questions or discussion? Commissioner Weich, go for it. So um, in this, I will start with staff. Um, does the, well, actually, can we can we see the, the presentation again? And is there a way to see where the, the fence was. I just wanted to understand the fence. And I asked the question about the fence because my other question is um, to the petitioner, um, because you will be operating a daycare center for three continuous hours, you have to provide outdoor play space. That outdoor play space uh, has to meet 1,200 square feet of um, a, a demarcated 1,200 square feet. And I'm I want to understand if what your solution is for that. And um, it's related to the question of whether you're going to be um, uh, governed by the state of Michigan's um, guidelines as a daycare center or if there's a special exception. So I guess if, if you're not going to be governed by the state, then my question is moot. If you are going to be governed by the state, how are you planning to address the outdoor play area because it needs to be adjacent to the church unless there is a park within walking distance and from the aerial shots i don't see a park that you can walk the kids to so hopefully my questions all made sense and we can start with staff yeah and then um go from there would you like to hear me from me the petitioner yeah well i First, I'd like to see the site plan again and where the fence was, because if you already have your fence dealing with your outside play area, that may answer my question. If it's not there, then my question to staff is, do we have to have the fence on the site plan in any way to deal with an outside play area? So I'm sorry, I, I know yeah. I had a lot of questions in that and I have them all written down so I can go slower if it's helpful, sorry. Yeah. Um, I think I can answer most, but I will have to defer to the applicant there. Um, the city of Ann Arbor, I should say, the Unified Development Code has no additional standard for outdoor play area for child care centers. Our specific requirements are only that the lot size has 7,500 square feet and there's a um, parking for the caregivers. However, I do understand and the applicants can nod, this is going to be a state licensed child care center facility yeah, for um, up to however many children they apply for. And so the state requirements would apply. I think that they and maybe you are more familiar with the square footage requirements. But the um, petitioner's team architect, Ms. Epperson, has pulled up the, uh, a zoom in of the site plan. And I, her, um, I should probably stop, but her mouse is pointing at they'll be installing a new fence. Um, the UDC Unified Development Code does have fence regulations. And so as long as the height and opacity meet the Ann Arbor requirements, you can put it in for any purpose. Um, and, but that is the location where they are proposing to do their, I think, dedicated play space. Now, I'm, if, would you like them to chime in as well? Not yet. Yeah. Okay. So, so if I understand correctly, um, and this, this would be to Ms. Ep Epperson, Epperson, sorry. Yeah, yeah Ms. Um, Epperson is the architect and Ms. Supa is the director. 
Right. So uh, maybe back to you for staff. Um, what's our height requirement for the fence or the minimum height requirement for the fence? Uh, fences can be as short as you like. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> so the state yeah. requires that it's four feet. So it has to be four feet. And then we have requirements around um, how much light gets through. I'm having word retrieval problems <laughs> uh, here. So my pandemic life. Yeah. Uh, okay. Fences, and then fences in the front yard. Fences in a front yard, which which is defined as the space between, let's say, the sidewalk and the building. Sidewalk in the street. Yeah. Yep. Um, are maximum four feet high and fifty percent opacity. So that's sort of in the ticket chain link style. And but this then, faces the parking lot, so it wouldn't need to be that side because the front of the church faces independence, if I'm correct, from my visit. Right. There. Well, but a front is any time is any public street. So um, and you or count the street. parking lot as a public not, street? Not the parking lot, but Powell is to the north. Oh. <laughs> Um, okay, sorry. Yeah. But and then when you're outside of the front, the fence can be um, um, the fence can be um, six feet high and solid. It okay. doesn't have to be, but it can be. And this is applicable for um, any residential zoning district. Um, and so the the fence, but the fence example that they proposed, a fence permit would be issued for that type of fence by the UDC. Okay, so um, then my only other question would be, um, does this fit the state minimum and is there any need for us at planning to ensure that that is reflected on the site plan at this time? Um, or is it they just have to conform and then they'll conform to our fencing standards as they conform to the state standard, but we don't yeah. need to specify anything on the site plan. I can um, I can speak to the second part. Um, we don't need to show a play space on the site plan to meet our special exception use standards. Okay. Um, but I'll have to defer to them for what is the square footage requirement. And the reason why I ask is because this is a very expensive process for them to bring these plans before the commission. Right. Yeah. And as a um, daycare provider and a church, they are not running uh, very large <laughs> caches yeah. of cash. And I want to catch anything to help them before they leave this table. Uh, being a child care provider myself and having had to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars making adjustments to our building, <laughs> I want to make sure this process is uh, serving them well. But it looks like um, all those things are in order. So I think I think that's my questions. I don't I don't know that I need the petitioner to answer anything specific at this time. Oh, yeah. Well, then Thank for you, you I'll, I'll just mention that um, um, they can next year, they can increase the size of their fenced area, add more fences. That is not, that does not require uh, site plan approval, even without the changes to the threshold that the commission is talking about. Um, adding or subtracting a fence is out, it can simply be done with a zoning permit. So they will be able to make that change at any time in the future to meet their needs. What will trigger site plan, site plan submittal would be a building addition, actual rooms and and enlarging the the building um and then it is why i i hope that the 40 children is enough for even maybe a little bit of future growth um if the square footage of the building can handle it because say it doesn't matter what the number is five years down the road they would like to expand um any more than whatever the condition is that would uh, trigger another submittal but Changing fences, changing playground areas would not. So one um, final clarifying question uh, for me at this point is a um, shade shelter. Would um, a shade shelter have to be specified on the site plan? Um, it would a little bit depend on the size and scope that you're talking about. Um, so it would be an open shade, it'll have a minimum amount of square footage that the state requires for the number of students because while they're outside they have to have 
a shaded space that they can play in. And I just want to ask if that has to be on the site plan. Um, So it's open. It's not an enclosure because I know Mr. Leonard had a conversation with council about defining what a building was. And um, so if it's, if it doesn't have any walls, uh, does it change the site plan because it's not a structure because it doesn't have walls? Uh, if they were to build sort of a pavilion, yes, um, that the depending on the scope, I think 200 square feet might be the trigger um, for an accessory structure. Um, so we would they would have to do a site plan modification if they built a pavilion that was greater than 200 square feet. Let me uh, let me double check that number. Um, okay. Or right. maybe, Mr. and I'll, I'll look However, up the, the they, state rule. <laughs> yeah, but if they were, I've seen some at, at some daycares where they have some, um, they use like the sails, the, you know, mm-hmm. kind of the, um, that would not, and trees, that would not, and umbrellas would not, and it also depends on the anchoring system. If it's permanent, you know, with a footing, that may require building permits and site plan review, but if it's a more temporary, um, oh. so if it um, has an 18 inch footing uh, for the structure, we w- they would have to resubmit um, a site plan. Yeah. So they um, thank you for bringing it up. I'll have to put it back to them if they feel that they'll need um, to construct it. Nothing was mentioned in their application, but the bottom line is I feel that there are some things that could qualify as a shade structure that would not need site plan approval. And there are some things that would. Okay. And it's all based on the state. So once they, um, once they build the fencing area for the playground area, the playground inspector will come out and then specify what needs to be in the space. So the challenge is, um, I guess for the petitioner, here's some unsolicited advice. (laughs) If you put in a footing that's over 200 square feet, just know that you may have to resubmit a site plan. And so um, there you go. I'm going to go look up a rule and hear from another commissioner. Thank you for answering my questions. Commissioner Silve. Um, I'm doing some quick parking math and it looks like you have 16 spare parking spaces. Um, and once you take away all the church parking spaces required. And I just want to make sure uh, relative to state daycare, kind of similar to Commissioner White, that if we approve for 40 children, how many caregivers and drop-off spaces are required to make sure you don't exceed 16 so it doesn't contradict what we were approving you to have children on site, and then you need more than 16 parking spaces, which you wouldn't have. Does that make sense? So I, it's more to the petitioner. Um, if you know the proportion of how do you calculate caregivers and uh, the drop-off spaces per ch- child. Yeah, so it is one space per caregiver and um, two drop-off spaces per first 20 children and one for each additional 20 children. So three drop-off spaces we said was required for uh, 30 children. Um, If we went up to 40, we would only need, I guess, one additional space. So four drop-off spaces required. And then they would have to leave it up to Allison and Paula to indicate how many additional caregivers would be required for 40 children. Do we know how many caregivers that would be? If not 10, how many would it be? Right, it's, it, it will be 10 to follow the one to four ratio, but you will look for more, um, let's say 13 for, you know, some um, part-time or some um, people who come and give lunch um, breaks. So let's say a max of 13 or, you know, let's say 14 um, to 40 students. But the UDC okay. would require just one space for the state required people, um, caregivers. Yeah. So it would, with 40 children, it would remain, am I correct, at 10 one. state required caregivers. For the one to four. Okay. Then you're good. 
it's just one extra, which means you still have a couple extra to grow if you want it to come back and change. So just want to make sure when we're approving, like we're not improving something that actually contradicts what we're, you're all actually allowed to do. So, um, and then there were comments about um, children playing. Was that activity like, I don't know, vacation Bible school or something last summer, or were there other activities going on? Just understanding that. Yeah, so we had a, a learning center happening at the church last year. Um, we helped um, children from mixed status families um, have a, sp a space to learn. So they brought their laptops and they learned there. We had 24 students. Um, they came Monday to Friday from eight until four. And we were actually the only program that was able to help um, children um, from frontline workers in need, um, you know, to be a safe space. So yes, they used the back um, facing, um, um, I, I didn't get her at, let me check, the 2320 Manchester. Um, they were using the hill in the winter. They used that space a lot. They built forts and they were out there quite, a bit. Uh, we are not going to be there. We're going to move to the other side. Um, so we're going to be at the front by the parking lot where you have seen the fence that's going to be our play area. Um, so we we might go out in the back for a, a walk, but it's not going to be the amount of activity that um, she experienced um, last year. And the ages are different too. We had children from K to ninth grade um, last year there. Um, this is going to be, you know, toddlers um, and strollers with babies, less noise. I mean, that's great to have that program too. So kudos for just making that happen over the past couple Thanks. hard years. But um, yeah, good to know it's kind of on the other side too. And the, the buildings are actually shielding it from some of that as well. So, all right, I appreciate it. That's, that's helpful. Um, great to see kind of more mixed use, um, community use in the neighborhood. Commissioner Gibrandle. Um, this seems like a great project. I'm in support of it. One thing I um, am wondering about is when I go back in historical aerials, when the when the parking lot was put in, there were two trees for each island in there. Now there's only one tree that exists out of the four that used to be there. And I'm just wondering about, you know, coming into an existing site plan, which is not compliant with its original, um, with its, what, their original requirements because i you know in 2005 you would have been required to put um internal landscaping in and um three out of the four trees have died so i'm just wondering what you know what's the status with that in terms of you know when a special exemption use comes in then all of a sudden you're under a microscope we've done that with all of the um, other projects in terms of any of the medical marijuana facilities and I just want to make sure that we're being, you know, equitable in terms of how we think about the different uh, site plans that come before us for special exemption use. It looks like they were put in soon after it was um, constructed, and then it, I they and then the last year I see them like all together. It looks like by like 2015, three out of the four have died. So for staff, I guess, what, what would be your response for this? Um, I may suggest um, adding a second condition um, to the motion, uh, assuming it's not postponed tonight, adding a second condition to, for um, compliance with the um, previous site plans, um, vehicular use area landscaping requirements. And I and staff can follow up um, follow up on that. Um. That would be great. I, I would I would support that. Um, and then uh, I'm glad to see I, it. The sidewalks look really um, kind of hit or miss in through this part of town. And I'm glad to see that there seems to be contiguous sidewalk between the church and um, the, the, the park that's not too far away. Um, and then it looks like west of there, everything kind of falls apart in terms of sidewalks there. So I'm glad to see that there's a, kind of a safe route um, for little ones, you know, that may be getting, going for the big adventure over to Burr Park, so. 
Commissioner Gabriel, did you want to move that um, the proposed the amendment? Sure. Yeah. So I move that. Uh, let's see. Help me out, um, Mr. Leo. That staff would review the prior site plan submission to make sure that the current site plan is in compliance with the original requirements. I'm not. Like, I don't know, you're going to come up with better wording than me, but I think you get what I'm trying to say. <laughs> oh, I see him working, me. so we'll let him work. Oh, got it. Yep, I can see him. The gears are turning. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess the other thing is I, the other caller talked about the dog walkers and the connection to Powell. And I don't know if anybody at the table here has any, just knows what's going on with all that. I mean, I, I don't, it seems to me that the site plan doesn't really have much to do with, with these other patterns that are going on in the neighborhood. But I don't know if anybody has any kind of, you know, knowledge or wisdom about, um, you know, how that's functioning while we're waiting for Mr. Leonard's gears to keep turning. <laughs> And that Anybody sounds it specifically like a question to the petitioners if yeah. anyone on the yeah. petitioner team had any insights into the dog meetup area or yeah, how this I, might change or yeah, not that. I have spoken to Mr. Lupo. Um, I know him and um, we actually walked on, um, I think it was yes, yesterday or the day before we walked by, I showed him everything and he showed me his proposed idea to cut through the dogs who are walking from Independence to um, Camelot instead of going into the church, he would like them to go straight by the parking lot. Um, and I suggested that maybe we can add some, you know, some like a, a little pathway. I've been thinking about maybe getting a, a container of um, dog waste bags so the dog owners walk that way. Um, but in, in all honesty, I've never seen a dog off leash there uh, in the time that I've been there. He's been there longer than I have. Um, and of course, through, through the pandemic, we got a lot of dogs. People got a lot of dogs. So there are a lot of dogs. So maybe, I mean, the rule that walking dogs on a leash is, you know, everybody knows it. And so if you, choose, you know, I know, I think there's a dog park at Burr Park where they can go to, you know, so I am happy to create a sign. I'm happy to look for, a dog disposal bags to put them on that side that he proposed to even create a little path for dog walkers to maybe go that way. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm not incredibly concerned about it. I was just curious if you all were aware of what he was talking about. Um, you know, clearly, I don't think we should be asking you to, to put in a concrete sidewalk for the dog walkers or anything like that. Um, but I guess as long as you all are, in, in dialogue, I think that's the important thing. So, all right, Mr. Leonard, any, uh, um, I any would, wordsmithing? I would, I think it, if I'm understanding correction, it would be to add as uh, um, Ms. DeLeo indicated, a second condition, um, which would be that the vehicular use area landscaping shall be compliant with the previously approved site. Sounds great. So that's moved, moved by yet. Commissioner Gib Randall, mm -hmm. seconded by Commissioner Weich. Now we're in discussion of that proposed amendment only. Any questions, comments about adding that as a, as another condition of approval? So to understand, they just need to add three trees to the islands that are on the parking lot. That's my understanding, but they need to go back and actually look at what was approved and just make sure that it's all good. That's the obvious thing that I see, but just make sure that it's compliant with what was originally approved. So I'll trust staff to, to be able to do that due diligence. Go ahead. I'd like to ask a question. So my, I think what you're saying is that in order to get the special exception use, we need to, we possibly need to plant three trees staff will let you know what it is that's my suspicion okay. um but it's yeah so when a special exception use comes up then we can look at 
your site again um, to see, you know, what's up to snuff and things like that. And when okay. other special exemption uses have come before us, we've done the same thing with them to look at, you know, bicycle parking or, or sidewalks or things like that, that might, um, you know, a lot of, unless somebody kind of reports these things, oh, these trees have died, we, we usually never see or hear about these things. And this is a chance, a special exemption use is a chance for us to kind of look at things and make sure that that everything is compliant. Uh, that would have been on the church the first time through. Um, uh, not So that's maybe a dialogue to have with the church about, um, frankly, you know, whenever I go to a parking lot, even if it's further away, I always end up in the summer parking next to the trees because I don't want my, my car getting baked. So it's a, it's a nice thing for people that are coming to, to be able to have a shady spot to be able to pull into. So it's, I think, a, a good thing in general okay. to be able to ha have that for your, for your, um, your clients as well. Okay. Do we have any idea about how long that time period would take for the, you know, for us to know if we have to plant trees in order to get the, the, the special exception? I think what we would be asking is for in between now and city council, we're not asking you to get off of the time track that you're on. But in between okay. that time and city council that you would meet with um, Ms. DeLeo or, you know, some other staff to be able to evaluate this so that when it goes before city council, you have a slightly revised plan that shows the updated uh, version of what we're asking for. Mr. Leonard, I think you were going to jump in with my question or clarification too. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to clarify this, um, this decision uh, is finalized by the Planning Commission. So the planning commission is the final arbiter of this uh, special accepted use permit and corresponding site plan. Oh, as for, right, right. As, right. Sorry. As for time frame, um, um, Alexis will work with the petitioner to verify that. I, um, I, I am guessing that that's something we should be able to put together within a couple of days um, to see what the what was on the previous approved site plan. A, a quick site inspection to determine what seems to be missing, and we can just. Uh, inform you relatively quickly um, of what that is. I would, um, I say a couple of days, but I, I guess probably early next week, we should be able to get you uh, a determination at the latest. Thank you. Would, would these trees qualify inside the city fund for trees? Isn't there a fund? It wouldn't. Okay. Just try. <laughs> All right, so we're still in discussion of the trees, adding the trees as a condition. Anything else? I, I agree with Commissioner Gabe Randall's point of just of equity. Like this is one of the things that we look at when special exception use comes. Um, hopefully it, this is, you know, not ridiculously onerous because I understand that there's already a lot of expense and we don't want to slow your process either because this is a necessary land use. Um, okay, let's take a voice vote of the prop proposed amendment and then we'll get back to discussing the overall proposal. So all in favor of amending to add in the condition about bringing the vehicular use area landscaping up to what was approved, please raise your hand or say yes. I see all of the hands. So the um, the proposal has been amended. Any other discussions or questions? Go ahead, Commissioner Weich. Just one last one around the, um, I'm probably gonna get this wrong, whether it's a, re it's a detention pond. Ah, I got it right. Um, the, how is how is the petitioner planning to wait let me let me back my question up is there a need for the site plan because it's a child care center to have any kind of protection of the kids and the detention pond i think that's my question to staff and then Based on that answer, I have a follow-up question. The UDC does not require fencing around detention ponds um, automatically. When a, um, depending on the, the slope angle, 
the water resources commissioners specifications might require one. Um, it's my understanding that this detention pond is neither does not meet the slope requirement and also it does not have standing water. Um, it is a um, uh, it's typically dry and it only floods when it's supposed to flood. Um, so I, so nothing this, so the city of Ann Arbor, I will not be requiring fencing around the detention pond. Um, if the Montessori school wants to add one, again, a fence does not trigger site plan approval. It can be done. I actually would assume that because of the age, the infants and toddlers, I don't think they'll be going outside of the new fenced playground area unsupervised. So I, I don't, I think there'll be minimal interaction. However, it, I would, this would be back to the applicant. If they feel more comfortable, they can add a fence, but the city of Ann Arbor will not be requiring one. Okay, thank you. Um, and, and that answers my question. And I will say um, kids of all ages know how to get out of fences. Yeah. And uh, I'll just leave it at that. I think I asked all my questions. Thank you so much. I meant to say when we started, this is a great land use. I'm grateful that you have found a place to host your center. I know you have been looking uh, for a place to host your center here in Ann Arbor, and I'm grateful that the, the Church of Good Shepherd is becoming a host for you. This is a, a multi-use of this facility, which will increase um, just the usage of that building throughout the week so that it doesn't sit vacant. Uh, this is a job creator uh, because you will be employing folks. This helps families because you will be providing uh, key infrastructure that we need in order for folks in our community to be employed and have goodness of life. I, I applaud all of that. And hopefully my questions were helpful and not distracting to your process. So great. I would just second everything that Commissioner Weich just said about the the benefits of this. Um, and I this the discussion over um, the parking requirements further, in my mind, necessitates our discussion around parking. Um, while uh, this in particular, this is exactly how I would hope that parking spaces could do double duty rather than being designed for one thing. And, and that we specifically for this, these two uses that we would require them to be additional rather than substitutional is crazy to me because a parking, I like, if there is a parking lot that is empty much of the week, I would hope that there would be space like this. And this land, this this type of use in particular is one that I could not agree more, is something that we've always had a shortage of. COVID did not make this any better. Um, and so we, you know, I think that this is a welcome addition and also why, unless it's gonna ruffle your feathers, um, folks, I like I appreciate staff adding in some additional capacity now to the number of kids just just in case you grow because um you know i i don't our need for child care is not going anywhere and i hope this is wildly successful um so um so uh, thank you i think that this is a great um i think that this will be a great addition to to the neighborhood other questions or comments All right, Mr. Leonard, could we have a roll call vote on the, remember folks, we amended the um, proposal, the motion. Mr. Hammerschmidt. Yes. Commissioner Dish. Yes. Commissioner Lee. Yes. Commissioner Clark. Yes. Commissioner Weich. Yes. Commissioner Mills. Yes. Commissioner Gibb Randall? Yes. Commissioner Sove? Yes. Another unanimous vote. Very good. Well, good luck. Um, nice to see you, Allison. Thank you very much. 
All right, we are on item 10, which is audience participation. This is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about any item of interest. If you wish to address the Planning Commission at this time, please press star nine if you're listening by phone or use the raised hand feature if you are viewing us through the web link. If you are watching us and want to call in now, uh, the dial in number is 877 853-5247 and our meeting ID is 977-6634-1226. City staff will select callers that have raised their hand and again if you've called in you can raise your hand by pressing star 9 on your phone. Per the usual, please mute any background sound so that we can hear you. Please state your name and address at the beginning of your comments. And I see a hand. Caller with the phone number ending with 941. You can press star six to address the Planning Commission. Go ahead. Hello. Uh, this is again Mike Lupo uh, at 2435 Powell. Um, this is more about the church. It isn't really, I don't think, anything to do with uh, the Montessori school. But um, after listening to the Henry Street uh, approval process of landmark trees, uh, the church, when they put their addition on in 2004, they killed several landmark trees. Um, last week, they cut down a couple trees next to the parking lot. Um, between the time I received the postcard for the Montessori and this meeting, um, they never put any plantings on the north side to shield my house from their parking lot. Uh, so I encourage everyone around the pond, which was originally supposed to be a retention pond, um, has had foundation work done my whole kitchen, uh, nine by 16, broke off and slid into the pond. Um, you know, the, the neighbor next to 2320, uh, they have two sump pumps. I put in one. Um, the pond holds water, not uh, 12 months a year, but a significant portion, there is water standing in there. Um, but um, I'm just bringing this up to address the plantings and trees. That um, I think if you go back to their site plan that was submitted in 2004, you will see they killed them, and it was the construction crew. There is a uh, a black walnut. They bulldozed all half of its roots, and it's hanging on a big angle. And I brought it up to them several times. It's going to fall on somebody on your property, it's on their property. And uh, they cut down other trees, but they don't address that one. Uh, but it has withstood <laughs> big windstorms, so it might not be an issue. But um, yeah, I just wanted to call your attention to uh, the plantings. Thank you. Thank you. No other callers, all right. Um, we're on to item 11, commission proposed business. Is there any this evening? All right. Well, seeing none, we can be on to item 12, adjournment. Moved by Commissioner Sauvé, seconded by Commissioner Lee. All in favor, please raise a hand. I see all of the hands. Have a good night, folks. <laughs>